Hello my dear students, welcome once again to your Geographies online class. We will be discussing today the chapter again, Endogenous Process and Associated Landforms. In this class, we will be discussing specifically two topics today, that is folding and faulting as a process associated in deformities or in deforming landforms from their original structure or how the endogenous process or forces acts upon the landforms to form a various different types of major landforms. So let us first discuss folding. So what is folding? Folding is bending. You take a paper or anything and then you bend that is folding at home you just pick a piece of cloth and this just jerk it or apply some force on it leave it as it is you will see that there are different bends formed on the cloth that is folding similarly the earth's crust also bends because of forces applied on it like we discussed the earlier class regarding compressional force and tensional force. So due to compressional forces the earth's crust bends so folding is what folding is bending of horizontal layers of the earth's crust we all know what is crust it is the ground beneath us where we stand so these crust is rocky layers mostly formed of rocks and minerals these rocks or these landforms or you can say crust when applied with some force they bend and this is known as fold so when it bends This is bending. So then the first case, it is a straight line. Case two, this is bending. So when this line, consider this to be a crust, when force is applied from either side, then we get to see that the, the crust starts getting folded or it starts bending so when it bends you see one is a downfold and the other is upfold this is upfold and this is downfold in in a, in a common term we call it upfold and downfold technically the upfold is known as anticline and the downfold is known as syncline. So downfold it's sinking, so hence syncline. While it's just opposite to syncline, hence it is known as anticline. So this is fold. And the process involved is known as folding. Now let's discuss about various types of folds. The types of fold that we witness on this earth surface mostly depends on the intensity of force applied onto that particular crust or the surface of the earth. So based on the intensity of force applied, we will get to understand various types of folds. So now we will be discussing the types of fold. Let's see the first one. The first one, let's see, symmetrical fold. 
you see this diagram now what we see is the angle of the fold from the base is equal so when these angles of the fold or you see this is the landforms we call it limbs or the side of the mountain these are limbs so when the either side of the fold is equal or you can say the angle of the fold to its base is equal on both the limbs then the fold is known as symmetrical fold the limbs here are equally bent and hence we call it symmetrical fold now the next one we will discuss is asymmetrical fold in asymmetrical fold what you find is when the force applied from either side is unequal or you find on one side the force is heavy or more while on the other side the force is less so in this case what happens is the limbs gets pushed a little inward on the side where the force is applied the maximum and hence result in unequal bending of the limbs in this particular fold so this is known as asymmetrical So this is where we get to see that when one side of the limb is pushed more than the other side then we get to see asymmetrical form folds formed in this case the force applied maximum is from this side where we get to see a gentler slope and as it as the fold gets pushed a little so this starts pushing towards inward leading to a steeper slope to be formed on the other side so the third is monoclinal fold so in this fold what we get to see is that the force applied on this structure we get to see is more on the gentler slope while less on the steeper slope while almost the steeper slope forms almost a 90 degrees angle a straight line or a vertical structure so when such happens or when one of the limb so what we see is in this fold we see one of the limb forms vertical structure here while the other seems to be gentler slope so in such case it is known as monoclinal fold as the term mono means one so only one of the limb stands to be vertical So the fourth one is isoclinal fold. In isoclinal fold what we see is that the fold both the limbs are completely inclined to one side because of the force applied maximum from the other side. So this results in the fold The fifth one is recumbent fold. In this fold what happens is it seems like to be overfold but when further force is applied when further force is applied the fold tends to further incline more and remains almost parallel to the structure of the earth's crust. So this type of fold is known as recumbent fold.
So in this case what we see that the limbs of the fold that the limbs these two limbs of the folds seems to be almost parallel to each other and this happens when more or when further force is applied towards on the folds. The overthrust fold, in this case what happens is with further applying of force, that is compression of force, the limbs or the fold now starts getting a crack on it, that is fracture on it. So faults are formed and this fault is known as overthrust plane. Now in this case, the limbs, one of the limb is completely over the other resulting to which a fault is occurred. And in this case, it seems like one fold remains to be over the other fold. This is known as overthrust fold. This results in the formation of overthrust fold. You see, due to excess compression, fracture occurs and one of the limbs slides over the other. So there is a sliding of it. This is known as the overthrust fold and the other is known as nap. The lower limb here is known as nap. Next one. In fan fold, it so happens when the forces applied from the either side results in the formation of a series of folds. Now this series of folds seems to be like a fan structure in arc shape and hence is known as fan fold. This is known as fan fold. Now let us discuss the process called faulting. So what do we see here in faulting is usually faulting occurs as a consequence of the tensional forces applied on the earth surface. So what happens? Let's see. So what we see in faulting is that the earth structure or over the earth's crust when tensional forces act, that is a force which moves away from the central position or the point is the tensional forces. Now this results in the cracks to occur over the land masses or on the earth surface and results in the earth structure to deform its shape resulting in either the upliftment of one of the block or subsidence of the other part of the earth's crust. So this is what faulting is in. So faulting is a resultant process of the tensional forces applied on the earth's surfaces that results in the formations of cracks on it which is known as faults. So these tensional forces acting upon the earth's crust results in the faulting to occur. So this line where we see where the fault is occurring is known as fault line. This is known as fault line and with along this fault line the land forms either uplifts or it slips down or that is subside. So this plane, the plane structure where, it, where the land form is slipping is known as fault plane. This fault, lay, fault plane, now the slope that forms is very steep. So this steep sided slope, the steep sided slope of the fault plane or the fault line is known as fault scrap. Now let us discuss types of faulting.
So in normal fault play, uh, normal fault, what we see is the tensional forces acting on the crust results in cracks to occur. So with this crack occurring, the hanging portion of the landmass or this crust it slips down along the fault plane. So in this case what happens the hanging crust it slips downward why it so happens is because the tensile force acting on the opposite direction or the tensile force acting upon this crust results in the blocks to move in the opposite direction so here what we see is one is going down while the other seems to be rising higher this is of the same two blocks a and b of this first diagram this is a and this is B. So it seems to be like going on to the opposite direction and this is known as normal fault. The second type of fault is known as reverse fault. In reverse fault, what we witness or what we get to see is with the fault already occurred on the earth's crust, sometimes here the compression forces that acts upon it results in the fault or the crust to move in just the opposite direction of the fault that has occurred. So here what happens is due to the compression force applied towards each other here the crust the hanging crust in fact this is the hanging crust b it slips over the other part of the crust this is a and this is b so it slips over and then starts moving upward so this is known as a reverse fall Overthrust fault is also a resultant of compression force. Here, this type of fault is generally associated with the folding of the rock structure. So, this overthrust fold or fault forms when one of the block of the earth's crust overrides the other block due to the fault that has occurred in it. And this type of it is usually connect, this is usually associated with the Force. The last one of the fault is the step fault. The step fault occurs The step fall occurs when there are a series of faults almost parallel to each other forms on the earth's surface. So this series of fault that results in one or the other of the hanging wall to slip downward resulting to form a step like structure and hence this is known as step faults. Thank you class and you all have a good time.